Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you for the introduction. Heidi, that was a great overview, and uh, that was a, a wonderful perspective on, on all the opportunities. It is such an exciting time out there in the hospitality sector with pushing ability programs. Um, here, uh, where I work in North Carolina, we have several lead hotels um, that, are, that are already built and, and, and functioning, and um, there's just so many opportunities with, with retrofits and the whole green marketplace and triple bottom line. So that was a wonderful overview. Uh, my presentation is going to be somewhat of a stark contrast with Heidi's because I'm going to be focused in on, on talking about the intersection between water and energy use, and, and most specifically, um, as you are trying to evaluate some of the economics of a water efficiency project, I'll be showing you how to overlay the energy aspects of, of that. So that's, uh, that's my goal. I'm, I'm an engineer, and, uh, and I manage a, a team of, of retired and, uh, and volunteer engin engineers and scientists that serve um, across North Carolina, and we have done um, about 1,500 uh, energy, water, and waste reduction assessments for uh, a variety of organizations across, uh, across North Carolina. So I'll be sharing you, with you our kind of empirical knowledge of, of what we've seen in the hospitality sector, and it's, you know, it's, it's changed a lot. I think a lot of low-hanging fruit opportunities folks are, are, are starting to uh, to implement. You know, some of the, the toilet upgrades, a lot of those have been done to at least code compliant toilets. So a lot of the talk I'll have today is going to be really focused on what's, what's, what's our next step, what's, what's the opportunity we see out there, mostly in this broad mid-range hotel motel sector. Okay, so this, um, uh, my, my presentation is going to be um, uh, a little briefer today, and I'm just going to hone in on, on this uh, um, energy, a uh, water environment. So I'm going to set the stage with to revisit some of those water balances that Heidi showed um, quickly, and, and talk about some some benchmarks. So whether um, you are an owner or a service provider, you can you can gauge where where you should be. And I want to share some of the numbers and cost trends. And then I want to just talk about that general energy water connection at two levels. One at that big picture level. What does it really take the embedded energy in water to get it? to your site, and then what is it, what's that impact at your site in, in terms of cost? And then I want to end with, with showing you how um, energy can be included into your water efficiency calculations for, for upgrades. So this is going to be fairly um, technically derived, um, and it's going to be honing in on, on really how you put uh, specific costs um, associated with these savings. I'll, I'll state that up front as, as we get going. All right, so um, here's a couple of, 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 first, a water balance on water uses and then an energy balance. So let's first look at that water balance. And so um, there we see guest rooms, um, biggest user of water, all those domestic kinds of fixtures we're seeing um, in the rooms. Um, that's followed by um, food prep and then laundry, heating and cooling, and landscaping. And so, you know, my examples are, are coming out of uh, North Carolina. And so, you know, things like landscaping could, could vary greatly. And in our particular region, where some of um, we're seeing our work, landscaping may not play as large of a factor as, as other places. The other changes I will say is that on the food prep side, there's such a range of um, food preparations within the hotel motel sector that that number uh, may shrink um, in places that have fairly limited food service. And then you may see the laundry percentage at 20% grow when that food prep shrinks. So, but, but guest rooms are always going to remain um, the largest water user. Okay, so let's jump to the right side of this and look at energy. Um, our, our heating, cooling, ventilation, that's um, this particular example um, we have. That's, that's the uh, largest, um, largest percentage. And um, this, this pie really um, comes from... Um, a handful of audits that we have done of late, and, and these places are, have upgrade, upgraded their lightings and, and already made some significant production uses. So things like lighting really came out very small in this particular example, and typically lighting is going to be going to be more than that. Um, laundry is a pretty big piece, um, but and as we look at the water connection, 
we're going to see all the water connection in that 12% of the pie. And I'm going to say that this is probably the most conservative example. You will typically will find that water use will be maybe 12 to 40% of the total energy use. And I'm going to be showing you some specific that as, as, uh, as we go forward. Okay, so let's start with, um, with some benchmarks. And I want to throw out some numbers out there. And, you know, they're going to range greatly, but, but these are a starting point. And these sometimes are most effectively used when you have a whole, you know, fleet of hotels and you can compare and, you know, you're, you're the energy manager over, over, you know, a whole, a whole operational sector. Um, but, but these are some good numbers to look at. So water use in general, um, these are from some um, numbers that came out of Colorado in 2007, um, 79 to 165 gallons foot. Now, as we look at benchmarks, what, what our, our program sees is that um, some of the most effective ways to look at water benchmarks are really to look at them on a guest basis because we see that the guests kind of drive that benchmark. It's, um, it's kind of, you know, of, of, of service delivery is that guest, and, and that's how we typically look at it. So water use per square foot is not always going to be the best indicator, and, and you can't, you know, you can't occupancy rates and so on. So, so 60 to 173 gallons per guest, that's a pretty huge range, and again, that that is influenced by a whole slew of things. You know, whether they have pre-water fixtures, you know, whether how much they have irrigation, pools, spas, you know, those really higher end amenities or not. So there's there's a big range there. Um, a little snapshot of um, uh, a number below a 95 to 125 energy use is very effective water use um, across the entire 70. Um, kilo BTUs, 70,000 BTUs, and again, you know, that's going to vary uh, widely, but that is something you could look at at your total energy bill, you know, divided by total square footage of your unit to give, where do, where do you fall on that? And, and that's the midpoint, so uh, that, that may go up if you've got a lot more intensive um, relations and banquets and conference areas, or and it could go down depending on what your amenities are. All right, let's look at those benchmarks in terms of cost. So I've just showed you water use. Uh, if we look at that water cost per square foot, now we see that uh, the cost per square foot is 53 to a dollar 11 per square foot, and that's based on um, an average water and sewer cost of, of six dollars and 75 cents per thousand gallons. Now that's you know that's that's a that's an average for North Carolina. You know wherever you are, it may be it might be different, but you could you could look at that. If we look at what the energy cost is per square foot, on the average, that across the nation average is 70,000 um, BTUs per square foot, that comes out to be um, $1.65 $1 per square foot, and that's based on $0.08 cents a kilowatt hour um, on a kind of electrical comparison there. And so we could see that your water and sewer costs, that could be um, uh, one Water and sewer is pretty expensive compared to total energy use, and so that just kind of shows you that, that it's worth um, honing in that the opportunities for savings in that area. So now we're going we're gonna to jump out to the big picture, and this is um, our, what are the total costs of um, water to your facility, and then to treat it once it leaves your facility. And, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but this was a, um, a study done in 2005 um, in Coast uh, that – you know, when we have a water source, and, and just to get that, to supply that, and to um, it may be zero to 16,000 kilowatts per million gallon supply. So that's a huge range, a lot of variability. I mean, are we pumping water out of the ground? Does it run down the mountain gravity feed? Do we have to store it in tanks and then distribute it? Do, how do we have to treat it? There's a really wide range of how the energy impacts what we need to do to the water to get it, potable water standards and then deliver it. Um, once you use that water and you discharge it down the drain, you know, we see this zero to 400 uh, or, well, actually, it's actually uh, 1,100 to 14 or 4,600 kilowatt hours per million gallons. So there's the other big chunk. Um, um, water has to be um, go through pump stations to get it to the wastewater treatment plant. Wastewater treatment process are typically much more intensive um, than the so overall, we see this uh, quite a large range. That's kind of a hard number for me to digest. I don't really know what that means. But if I look at it um, this way, um, 
we can see that um, on dollars basis, that means it might cost $16 to $60 sixty per thousand gallons just for the energy that's embedded. And you're comparing that to a total utility rate in North Carolina of $6.75. So you can see that the energy component could be could be significant. That's two to twenty kilowatt hours um, per thousand gallons. If we think about um, uh, that's just to get it there and to treat it once you leave your site. If we focus in on on this area, on what are we using at our own hotel motel? Um, again, I said water cost um, something like twelve to forty percent of our total energy. So if we take that, you know, that example um, example kind of hotel that at seventy. Um, thousand BTUs per square foot that average using hotel, then then the hot water, just the hot water could cost twenty to sixty six um, cents per square foot, and that that's you know nearly um, you know that's um, an eighth to you know uh, this of the total utility cost for energy. Okay, so what does it really cost to deliver hot water at your facility? And my apologies because I'm not going to I'm, I'm not honing in on all the examples of, of, of where we can save water and putting prices on all that, but I'm going to show you some slides on where we see hot water using elements in a hotel and what the savings are there. But we're still just trying to get a handle on what does this really mean, um, hot water versus water and sewer costs alone. And so that's, that's the goal of this. When we look at hot water uses in a hotel, there's kind of falls into two categories. We have we have hot water that's about in this 110 degree, 105, maybe a little bit higher degree range um, that's being delivered for, um, you know, for our for uh, kitchen sinks, for for our do uh, guest room sinks, um, showers, um, and other other kitchen devices. And so, when we look at that, um, I've broken the water cost and the sewer cost in this in this pie to the left out, and we see. Um, um, you know, water and sewer um, adding up um, to uh, a little over half of this pie. And then the energy to deliver that same 1,000 gallons at 110 degrees is $6.13. So that's that's 90% of the water and sewer cost. So it almost doubles um, the cost, and you can see the energy component. So as we do our cost savings analysis and any kind of cost benefit, we can see that that's going to have a big impact when we include energy. Now, the other place where we, we're going to be using quite a bit of water and we have opportunities are, are on the laundry and, and, um, and dishwasher food services side. And so um, for laundry, there's, there's typically a 160-degree uh, deliver. So that, that means we've got to raise that water temperature up yet um, another 50 degrees. And now we've, we've effectively doubled um, the cost to deliver that water at 160 degrees. Now, in a... In a, in a food service area where um, it's going through an automatic washer, that might be 180 degrees, and there might be a booster pump, and it might even cost more. But these are a couple examples to show um, how big of a pie um, energy plays when we're looking at water and sewer costs and the cost of that utility. Um, um, I guess we're going to really move into some calculations just for just a second, but what I wanted to to impress upon everyone is that it's pretty easy to to bring in cost of water and uh, the cost of energy and the cost of hot water into your cost benefit analysis because you're you're, you're probably going to be or if you're a resource provider you're digging in the, into this in detail you'll be looking at some kind of cost savings based on those water and sewer costs but to add in energy um, it's it's really based on one principle that it takes one BTU of energy to raise one water one degree. And um, my examples here, again, are, are pretty conservative, but um, most water is heated uh, with natural gas um, in the United States. And, um, you know, some may be on propane. There may be, you know, uh, some fraction that are, that are using electric heat. But um, um, natural gas is sold in therms, uh, unit of energy therms. Which, but um, this is based on... Um, a price of a dollar twenty-five per per therm. Um, we're raising water about fifty degrees to get it to one hundred and ten degrees, and that means that I was assuming the water was about sixty degrees coming out of the ground or being delivered, and that's not a bad average across the nation. It might be seventy or seventy-five degrees in Florida, to, you know, forty-three degrees up in Maine, but that's sixty is not a bad average. Then you have to equate um, in there some sort of heating efficiency because it's not one hundred percent efficient to 
heat up uh, water and, and deliver it out to your fixture. So 85%. That equation is there if, if you want to, you know, cancel your units, but it, it kind of shows you to get water from, to raise it 50 degrees, to go from 60 to 110 degrees. Okay, so um, this next slide is, um, is uh, just one, an, an application example, and, um, and here on the left, the, these are our, some upgrades that I've pulled out, for example. So these may be uh, laboratory faucets, shower heads, pre-rinse sprayers, um, applications in dishwashers and laundry. So, you know, with, while, while you're within a site, these are the common areas of upgrades that use hot water. Now, you have lots of other opportunities for just cold water, but I'm just, I'm just concentrated in on hot water. So let's, um, let's look at just one of these examples and kind of walk through it. Um, that pre-rinse sprayer that Heidi pointed out is probably one of the most effective things you can invest in because it saves both water and energy, and um, they perform really well um, also. So um, any of these strategies, you want better performance out of these. You, we, we, we don't ever want to go, uh, uh, we don't want to ever um, put performance at risk for, for upgrades, so that's whether energy, water, or, or the like. So. Um, our existing pre-rinse sprayer, and, and here again, these existing uh, scenarios and conditions are based on that we already have code compliant stuff. We don't have really old faucets and shower heads already. These are already code compliant, and we're going to move up into the, you know, the best available technology available today. So we already have a code compliant two and a half gallon pre-rinse sprayer. We're already using those to rinse off, uh, you know, plates and things before they're loaded into a dishwasher. We're going to upgrade to a high efficiency model that's 1.6 gallons per minute, and that improvement is 36% improvement when you're using it. Um, I estimated an annual water savings at using this a couple of uh, hours per day, um, and so 39,000 gallons per location. You know, you may have multiple plates where you're actually using this. Um, if we look at water and sewer cost savings, again, on my model of of you know six and three quarter dollars per thousand gallons, that's going to save us two hundred sixty six gallon dollars a year. If I factor in the energy, it's going to save almost that again at two hundred forty one dollars for a total savings of of uh, five hundred and seven dollars. Uh, in a in a in an example where you might have a hundred and twenty room hotel, you may have two of these. Um, doubles that. And then I just wanted to show you the payback periods of, in these last two columns, that if I don't factor in, I've got a, a 0.4 year payback period. So, you know, nearly half a year um, I factor in. And, so, and that's similar with the shower heads um, and the faucet laboratories, all that water being delivered. Now, um, I don't have the exact payback periods in here for our dishwashers and laundry, but I did make some estimates of, of our savings and what that might mean for this kind of medium um, sized hotel, uh, uh, mid-range hotel. And so for laundry, if we went from, there's something called, uh, laundry machines can be um, with, a, with a, water, um, a water factor, which is the number of gallons divided by the cubic feet in the machine. And if we go from a, our federal code compliant model to some of the best in class models, 37% reduction, and uh, when we calculate all that out, $5,300 per year savings um, for that 120-room hotel, maybe that 65% occupancy rating was estimated there. So, but that just shows you the savings. Now, that may not be enough for you to yank out your existing machine and put a new one in, but it certainly is going to it's going to influence your decision when to replace your current machine. And and to be able to factor that in and factor. Um, that if we look at $3,400 $3, in energy costs, $1,900 in water costs, by including energy and water in there, you know, we get the full picture, and that would definitely influence our, our cost-benefit analysis, at least from the economic side of when we make those decisions. So, so this, you know, being built on, on entire decision-making for the sustainability effort is just, you know, one of the pieces that comes in from the economic side. So in summary, I just want to say as we look at water savings, we've got a lot of opportunities. We hone into hot water. Hot water uses 12 to 40 percent of total energy use at your facility. Uh, that cost could be two to three times the cost of providing the water and sewer. And so that's people just don't realize how much that can impact 
um, total cost. And, and that may mean that, that in many cases you can have or even longer, um, you know, by including water um, in cost benefit analysis. So with that, I'll conclude and um, turn it back over to, to Jamie.